Okay, first it's got its little moss. It's gravitroped itself. It has an indention in it, and the veil isn't open. So this is the one I took the bite out of last night. There's something very special about communing with them in that way. Let's talk about gravitropism. Some mushrooms engage in what's called gravitropism. So you know how plants will go toward the light and that's called phototropism. Well, mushrooms need to make sure that they drop their spores on the ground for the mycelium. And so they need to be flat with the ground. And so, uh, the caps or the stipes, if they're still working their way up in height, then what they'll do is they'll turn the stipe any way that they need to. Like if they're stuck up against the side of a tree or against the side of another mushroom, then they'll, they'll fix their stipe and change it to go vertical. So that's why you will see some that have bends in their stipe. I'll get you one. They were straight when I picked them, but in the basket. Yes, after they were picked, while they were laying in the basket, they reoriented themselves. So they were laying on their side like this and it was straight. It started bending this way to try to orient its cap. This one did the same thing. See, same with this one. It was laying on its side. And so it tried to orient itself. Now this one, the actual stipe started bending to turn it this way as much as it could. Look, the veil hasn't been broken yet. No spores have come out of this yet. I'm gonna take a spore print of this baby. Just because it's gonna be pretty. No, we cannot grow. Amanita, I have a video about that. Please be sure to watch it. Grabby trope. That's so cool. And this is an example of gravitropism I didn't actually expect to get, but remember the picture that I just showed you of this one? I put it there to get a picture of it. And I remember like hitting it slightly. And so it tilted over a little bit on its side and I was busy. I left it. I was intending to come back and straighten it. Forgot it came in this morning. And that's what it looks like because it was, I had knocked it to where the cap was sitting at an angle. The whole thing was sitting at an angle. And so overnight it's like, yeah, that's not gonna work. So it actually shifted the stipe, not just the cap. It rotated the stipe. And so what it does is it adds more cells on the outside here and builds it up on the outside so that the outside is longer and that in turn forces the whole stipe to shift. And now the cap is sitting horizontal to the ground again. So another example of gravitropism. Now this is a perfect example of a gravitroped one. See that? It was like that when I found it. So when it was growing, what probably happened is it was under a lot of pine straw. And so it forced it to bend and it was doing its best to try to keep the cap upward. And the taller it got, the more strength in, that it had, a tensile strength this way. So it was able to start to try to orient itself back up again. So that's pretty cool. Dirty, dirty. Yeah, y'all can make whatever comments you want about how I look like shit. I've hardly slept. Once the season starts like this, there's so much work to do. Foraging, making videos, taking pictures for Instagram trying to keep these sorted and cleaned and drying and rotating and moving. These were his. Nope, not. I forgot, we just harvested them today. They still need a lot of time in the dehydrator. Okay, let me go get some more. This one was taken off for 
a photo shoot of a piece of driftwood with a big circular hole in it, and this went over the hole. That's so cool! It's so great! Remember how I told you I want to keep, I want to dry some not at heat so that I don't convert the ibo because I want to be able to use the ibotenic acid, especially for the addiction helper smoke blend, the one that's not drowsy because that hit of ibo will jack you up. However, I'm fairly certain I'm going to be finding a whole lot more because we're still very early in the season. So I'm just going to go on and dry all of these at heat. And then if I, if this is all I get, I'm going to have to buy some anyway. And since most of the European sellers don't dry them at high enough heat, if I buy from them, they'll all be front loaded with ibotenic acid anyway. So, yeah, that'll be a B. But that one's really, really red. It's one of the few really colorful ones that I've gotten. Now my floors, I'm just wiping everything off onto the floor. I'm not even gonna worry about it. When I take all these out tomorrow and get them all put away, I'll go through and just clean everything, sweep up the floors and everything. I'm just not even worried about it. So that's how I operate. Make your mess once and then clean it all up once. Also, handling this gets a lot of ibotenic acid into your body. Yes, it can seep through your skin and you'll get high from it handling them, but it's a really interesting high because it's not so much that you can't function. However, however, don't touch your freaking eyes with your hands. <laughs> if you didn't see yesterday's video, it was pretty bad. Ready?